Hello guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be building a trap and to do so I got everything over here. Um, this sort of trap I sort of thought up on my own. I won't take all the credit for it but uh, I kind of pieced together the components. So we're going to be using our old faithful sapling here which is actually starting to dry up and uh, it's losing a lot of its springiness. And one of these days it's, it's going to snap. But regardless we're going to give it a shot anyways. And uh, the stuff on the ground here is, for the most part, the materials. So I got some pretty heavy twine up here and um, this really light uh, fluorescent orange uh, cordage. And it's probably not the most ideal uh, cordage for a trap, but for demonstration purposes it works pretty well. And then over here, um, I built this trap about a month ago. So you can see the holes in the ground, like there, there's one there, and then there's another one there. So I'll try to explain um, a little bit more in depth of how this trap works, but for the most part you're going to need three stakes. So I got these two stakes here, uh, they're pretty similar, and uh, I won't give out any uh, measurements for length because that sort of depends on you know your trap and your conditions. Um, so you guys need to figure that out on your own. And then this stake is similar to the rest, but it needs to have this little lip on it because we're going to feed the line under that. So there's that, and then there's this stake up here, or not even a stake, a little stick. That's going to make um, part of the trigger. And then there's also this stick down here, which is the other half of the, of the trigger. And uh, I didn't cut this yet, because when you, this should be one of the last pieces that you craft. Um, you need to look at your trap and figure out, uh, this stake needs to be between uh, this, this length right here that length right there. So I need to cut that and uh, that's going to make the rest of the trigger. So I'm going to try to rig this up. Um, I really want to show you guys as well as I can um, how I put it together but it's a little bit difficult for me to do because I have to stand you know, way back here to get the whole view. So um, I'm going to try to bring you guys along and explain it as well as I can. Alright guys, so I just chopped this piece of wood off. Uh, about about this length and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put these three stakes in the ground so I'm going to go ahead and do that now so I had a little accident with uh, one of my stakes here this stake is the one that's supposed to have the little notch up here and it kind of faded away I guess it ripped off so I think we're going to get rid of that and I'm going to use this one instead uh, I just grabbed this, grabbed this one from my pile of uh, stakes over in that direction, so I'm going to try to set this up uh, on camera. It's going to be difficult, but we're going to try anyways. So with that stake in place, what we're going to do is we're going to take our cordage. I'm going to grab my sapling here, and I'm going to tie it off on the tip here, um, relatively above where that stake is. I'm just going to give this a couple good loops. You don't want this to come apart. This is, uh, and it, it will come apart if you don't tie it well. So that's in place. <clears throat> and the idea here is we want to figure out how much line we need. We need this. So we're going to run our line down and we're going to feed it into that little notch on this stake. You want to make sure that that sits in there well. And then you just want to bring it out and around this stake, just enough to go around this stake, about halfway around it. It doesn't need to be exact because you can always adjust it by letting your sapling up and down. But as long as it's close, and I got my finger here, so I kind of marked it. I'm going to take my knife and just cut it off right here. All right, so with this in place, like so, we're now gonna set the uh, trigger in place. And I'm just gonna position this so you guys can see well. So I'm gonna grab this part that I just tied up. I know you guys can't see, but I'm gonna take it like this. I'm gonna hold down the sapling with one arm, and then I'm gonna notch that in there. And then I'm just gonna feed this around this part like so. 
So now this is being pulled over and around this piece and this way and then right here we change the di direction of the, uh, the pull upwards. So to hold this in place, if I take this stick right here, which is a little bit long, I'm going to trim it. But if I just hold it like so, there. So now that is basically set. So essentially, this stick in the middle here is our trigger. So if I step on it, or if I kick it that way, uh, that will be set free. And then this whole sapling will straighten out. And uh, nothing's going to happen as of now. But what we're going to do is we're going to place a noose or a snare right on top of here. And we're just going to create a little slip knot. And we're going to tie it off up here so that when the trigger is released, uh, the snare will tighten around whatever released it. Uh, potentially a foot or maybe even a neck, depending on how you rig your trap. And uh, they'll be pulled up into the air. Alright, so it turns out uh, I'm not going to use that rope over there, that twine. Um, I'm just going to keep using the fluorescent green, uh, you know, very thin line there, uh, just because it works well. So I'm going to tie a knot on the tip here. And this is a whole separate string. This is not the same line as this. This is there's two two uh, sets of cordage involved. All right, so now we're gonna uh, be very careful here, and to create the slip knot, you need to actually untie this bit, which I already loosened up. Um, so we got this part over here, and then we're gonna take this end of the line, and to do this, we're gonna start like this, and you just you want to make a loop. It's very difficult for me to explain how to tie it. Um, just sort of mess around with it until you make a loop like that. So I have this here. Now I'm going to take the other end and I'm going to put, place it through. And like always, this isn't the most professional slip knot, um, especially for hunting. So, but it does work well for uh, demonstration. And it's quick and easy for me. So I'm going to tie it back off up here. You want to be very careful that you don't trigger the trap. And then now I have a sort of slip knot here. Alright guys, so I decided to go one step further here and uh, create a little bit of a box for uh, the shape of the snare. So I obviously tied it off up here and then down here, really nothing too creative going on. There's the little slip knot over there and then there's four stakes each of which is notched like so to hold the line in place on the tip. Uh, you want to make sure that your snare can be released off of here. This just, it just needs to be resting in place. Um, nothing can be holding it down. And you want to also keep in mind that when you create a shape like this, uh, you are, you're, uh, I guess you're donating more line to the animal or whatever sticks its leg in here. So what I mean by that is uh, if the line is short, which is what you ideally want, the animal won't be able to touch the ground. It'll be hanging in the air off the sapling. Uh, if the line is too long, obviously he's going to be able to run around on the ground, uh, maybe chew his way free, run in circles. Who knows? So really quickly, I'm going to go over this one more time. Obviously the sapling is here, and on the tip it is tied off, fed down into this notch over here around this stick which goes around the stake and this stick here wants to go that way up and around and up but it can't because this stick here is holding it in place trigger stick so it's essentially a uh, maybe even a trip wire or a pre pressure plate or a pressure pad as soon as this stick gets um, stepped on uh, the whole thing will take off and the snare will go with it and up into the air the critter goes so thanks guys for watching. I'm going to do a couple demonstration here, demonstrations, and uh, hopefully you guys will understand the big picture a little bit better. And of course, subscribe, do what you guys want to do, um, help me out. I really appreciate all that, and I'll catch you guys later.